I am so sad about everything going on with Spider-Man 4 and Venom 3. And while just about each and every topic I'm about to discuss is speculation and speculation alone, it doesn't bode well for Peter Parker's future that he's being roped into the cosmic null saga for a quick buck. Though I do have high hopes for Venom 3, for some reason. Scrolling through Twitter and seeing that bit of news, it was like someone punched me in the gut knocking all of the air out of my lungs. I went from confused to skeptical to complete dismissal. But most of all, the feeling that stuck with me the most was anger. But that's not who I am. It's not who I want to be. Welcome to Sandwich Reviews. I'm the Talking Sentient Sandwich, and I'm going to choose to be optimistic about all of this, even though that is incredibly difficult. In case you're living under a rock and you didn't already know, a few weeks ago it was confirmed that Spider-Man 4 would be a multiversal movie. And not just that, it'll feature multiple symbiotes and has a working title of King in Black. And that's not 100% confirmed, but the fact that more than a few somewhat credible news sites have reported on it as fact kinda says something. We already knew that 99% of the movies in Marvel's latest saga have to do with the multiverse, but even after knowing that, I was still hopeful that the stakes were going to be small for the next Spider-Man movie. Smaller movies tend to not make as much money or have as much cultural impact, but I expected that partly because I think it works better for Spider-Man, but also because that's the concept Marvel set up for Peter at the end of No Way Home. Besides, the setting and action can be as grandiose and special effects filled as Marvel wants, but that doesn't mean the story and stakes have to be. But let's put a pin in that for now, because I can't go much further without bringing up the symbiote elephant in the room. Eddie Brock and Venom are extremely important to the King in Black storyline, to the point that the MCU will either have to introduce a new Eddie in Spider-Man 4, or fold Tom Hardy in, which is the obvious option. To be honest, I don't like either, and would rather go with another storyline entirely, but I suppose if Marvel is going to go ahead with all the King and Black stuff, they might as well use Hardy's already established Venom, and that's because he is the most well-known version of the character. And this'll happen through an inevitably convoluted narrative that will still take a lot of explaining for the general audience to get up to speed, but despite my hesitation to the idea of Sony having any internal impact on the MCU, that is the best way to go about this. And I'm not going to go out and say that Venom 1 and 2 are perfect or terrible. They're okay, and I'll put one on if I want to watch a guilty pleasure kind of movie. But I really don't want to see Tom Hardy or any of the characters from Sony's adjacent Spider-Man universe slash universes in the MCU. Nonetheless, I could see this particular character working if only because Hardy is an incredible actor in both dramatic and comedic roles, which is necessary for Venom. And there is precedent for him to exist within the mainline MCU universe, with him popping in to talk to Danny Rohan in the post credits of No Way Home. How will he be transported into the Sacred Timeline? Will this supposed King in Black movie even take place on the Sacred Timeline? I truly have no idea. But in that, I want to take a second to ask where, when, and how does Venom The Last Dance take place? In the trailer, which is all that I'm really working off of, we see Chiwetel Ejiofor covering the same Venom residue that we saw in the post credits of No Way Home. Does that mean that Ejiofor and some of the other side characters in The Last Dance are going to come from the Sacred Timeline? Is the narrative going to jump from Eddie's Earth 688B to the MCU within the movie itself? If done at all, it's all but assured that any glimpse we see of Null and Eddie universe hopping will be a post-credit tease, more of a promise for what's to come than actually depicting and setting up the ideas of King and Black, though I have no idea if that's actually confirmed, just a gut feeling from what Sony has done in the past. Though to be fair, I am genuinely hoping that comment doesn't age well, because I would love for Venom 3 to be good. In any case, I shouldn't preemptively complain about something I don't actually know will happen. But you know what? That's all this video really is. So along those lines, I think it's ridiculous to put Null in your movie only to have him at the very end. There's the desperate side of it, planting a tease at the end of the movie as if Sony is begging for their universe to stay alive. And then there's the narrative side to it, which is all dependent on what exactly occurs in The Last Dance, but it seems like that movie will cover some kind of symbiote invasion, or at least the preceding events to a full-scale invasion, possibly featuring any number of symbiotes from Agony to Toxin. 
the whole rainbow. And I won't lie, that's not a bad story to introduce the massive cosmic threat that is the god of the abyss. However, it does feel incredibly anticlimactic for that movie to lead up to this antagonist only to have him not play a major role in the story. Seriously, if Marvel truly wanted to slowly set up Null, which is the correct way of introducing him, have Norman Reedus or Andy Serkis or whoever is playing him come in and actually do something. End the movie on a cliffhanger of Null taking over the Earth and wrapping it in a symbiote shroud, crossing my fingers that that is the case. I should also take this time to say that I was never really a fan of Null. I wasn't able to keep track of the exponentially growing number of symbiotes in the first place, and to have a symbiote god only felt like a course correction. But once I actually sat down and read King in Black, and all of the subsequent tie-ins, I enjoyed it quite a lot, and I can recognize how elements of that story can be turned into something phenomenal. Be that as it may, Null is ultimately just not a Spider-Man villain. He's a cosmic entity that has more to do with the birth of the universe, held at bay over his long, long life by the Celestials. Peter Parker never even has any kind of encounter with him, because what is he going to do? Web him up? Punch him? Peter is in the story, but he's really only there to give moral support to the actual protagonist of the event. There's even a side issue where he points out that this is all way above his pay grade, and he instead chooses to focus on saving people, because that's what Spider-Man does best. During that issue as well, he grapples with the fact that this all started because he brought back a black suit from Battleworld, and though there are a lot of steps between that and Null invading Earth, it does make sense for a guilt-ridden hero. And I really liked the internal dialogue that came from that, but it's not like that specific circumstance could happen in the MCU. Because Tom Holland has yet to get a black suit, but... Spider-Man isn't the kind of hero who takes on cosmic threats. He has an insane amount of strength, but that is only in rare situations where he is forced to, you know, lift some rubble in an iconic shot. But it's the mom lifting a car idea. He is only able to exert just enough strength to do whatever task is needed. Plus, the situations he's put in are written so that Spider-Man's particular skill set can be used for the solution, which just isn't going to happen with Null. And that's all ignoring the fact that if Marvel wants Peter to have significance to the storyline, he needs to get the black suit. And that could be perfect right now. Just have a movie solely with a depressed and lonely Peter coming into contact with the symbiote, something already set up with the venom drop being left in his world. That grounded character study is right there. But getting back to King in Black, because overall, I suppose some elements of that story could be circumvented, but a lot of it can't be changed without shifting everything, nor should it be changed in the first place. Often when adapting a big event storyline, the name alone is taken, with the general outline of the story used sometimes. And that is okay. So long as the general vibe and the cool shots are used, that'll always work for me. But for Secret Wars and now King in Black, I would prefer the writers to skew at least a bit closer to the comics. I'm sure New York at the very least will be covered in goo monsters by Null, but a symbiote enveloping the world is a hell of a visual, and accompanying that, seeing all of the Avengers in symbiote form is a must. I mean, like all big comic events, there are dozens of tie-in storylines, which often make it feel like an impenetrable mountain to climb. In King in Black, there is a side issue where Doctor Doom and Iron Man team up to fight a venomized Santa. In no way should that ever make it to the silver screen. Though I won't lie, now that I've said it out loud, I kinda wanna see that in a Christmas special presentation. But anyway, obviously not everything can or should be translated one-to-one, -one, but I still wouldn't mind seeing a lot of the King in Black story unfold just as it did in the comics, or at least use the cool visuals. And there's plenty of obstacles to that happening in live action, yet the biggest hurdle that must be overcome, and I'm kinda surprised Venom 3 isn't about this, is Eddie's son Dylan. I guess that could be a plot point hidden from the trailers, but from what I've seen, he isn't there at all. Though I suppose Dylan's whole aspect of having symbiote powers and essentially being a child of Null can be cut, but it's the emotional element of the story, and the dynamic between Eddie and Dylan is what makes the whole thing relatable and compelling. And none of that works unless Null is going after Dylan. Plus, giving the villain an immediate goal like that makes a massive spanning story comprehensible. But moving on to another missing character, just like, say, Adam Warlock in Infinity War, Captain Universe and the Enigma Force can be foregone completely. 
but I would like to see the ending of that cosmic power plus Mjolnir plus the Silver Surfer's board being needed to stop Null. And on top of that, that has to be done inside the sun. All in all, Null just is not the kind of threat that ends with a punch-up or a creative science solution. You know, the kind of third act ending that Spider-Man always ends with? And I guess that isn't always the case, but if there's a hill that I will die on, it's that Spider-Man needs to stay street level. There's a reason he is the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Emphasis on neighborhood. He should be getting to know each and every one of the people he saves on a personal level, so that in the third act, that can come back around when there's symbiote monsters and have to be saved from the mental prison that Null has individually trapped them in. That, or it could just be used to amp up the whole aspect of them being bystanders, which superhero movies should always have more of. But if cashing in was the only option, then we could have still gotten the ground level Spider-Man movie everyone wants. I would love to see a Daredevil Kingpin story, but it could be anything. That might get in the way of Born Again, but if not, why can't Spider-Man appear in that show? Apparently Sony has not allowed it, but I don't see the problem with letting other projects use your character, because that's just free publicity. Or... Just have the black suit Spider-Man movie that I talked about earlier. My one issue with the movie version of that specifically is that I would want to see an entire story devoted to that concept. And because Marvel apparently wants to immediately have the big cosmic story for immediate profits, I can't imagine the black suit will be given enough time to be done justice. It's the one thing I should have mentioned in my video about Spider-Man 2 on the PS5 because that whole story was rushed, and I don't want to see it rushed again. It deserves time and maturity, something that cannot be prioritized if that whole narrative just becomes a checkoff list. But it's not like a big cosmic story can't have a grounded center. So long as it's about Peter's internal struggle, then any number of universe-sprawling stories could work for Spider-Man 4. The Spider-Verse movies span a bunch of multiverses and feature even more Spider-Men, yet it still manages to tell a personal and relatable story. So I still have faith that, with good writing, I suppose a King in Black movie can work. I'd rather that they wait, though. But what are your thoughts on Venom 3's supposed ending, Null, and Spider-Man 4 possibly being King in Black? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe for weekly video essays and reviews, and enjoy a delicious sandwich.